Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial over Black Prior, also a guide over Black Prior, however you want to say it. Today we are going to be going over him, his capabilities, his moveset, and today we have Spartan who will be joining me for showing off a good portion of it. So, Black Prior is a heavy character added as part of Season 9. And uh, because he's a heavy, he gains more renown, boosting zones, getting assists, and doing revives than other characters, such as assassins, vanguards, maybe hybrids. Don't quite know about the specifics on the hybrid thing. Um, so, uh, there's a couple things to note about him. Uh, well, he he kind of has a uh, rushing, fo rushing heavy, so upon sprinting, if you do a heavy... It'll do a very slow heavy that nets you a gain of 25 damage if it lands. However, it's kind of done from the left side, so if he was blocking left, it would be blocked. It's very simple to do. And uh, that's pretty much it for his out-of-lock game. It's not really something you would do very often, but it's there. Another thing to note is upon dodging, he, uh, he switches his guard in the direction that you're dodging, which is a uh, very interesting mechanic. This makes it very good for dodge uh, for doing uh, Lawbringer's shove light mix up. So if he does a shove light, well, I did that way too early. Well, if I wasn't doing it early, it would basically, yeah, it would kind of block Lawbringer's shove light. It doesn't net you anything, but it does make it very safe against that in particular. He doesn't have. Uh, he doesn't have any uh, do side dodge moves, so upon doing this, you aren't really gaining anything. And because it's not superior block, you don't really gain anything in general from it. So, uh, he has a freeform... Now onto his uh, attacking. He has a freeform two-hit chain, so light, 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 heavy, heavy, and any mixture of the two. So... And... Uh, another thing to note is his um, is his lights are crushing counters. So if he does a top heavy, please. I cannot time for crap. You will be granted a crushing uh, twenty damage crushing counter. This also works for the sides as well. I just I didn't do it for that one. So yeah, that's actually a thing. Another thing to mention is his uh, heavy finishers are undodgeable as well. So if an opponent tries to dodge, they will be granted, uh, well, basically they'll be either hit or they will be blocked. You cannot dodge the second heavy. However, you can be out of range of it, which is very unlikely considering how much forward tracking it has. So things to keep in mind, especially for later in the tutorial, we'll get into that more. Uh... Another thing to note is, as of Season 9, all Superior Lights are now crushing counters. So, Warlord finally joined the crew on the Superior Light squad. So, that's a good thing to note. Everyone's a bit happy about that. Um, now, on to... Uh, he has a forward dash shield bash that, if landed, grants a finisher light. And... It's a 20 damage light, which might seem a bit overpowered, but here's the thing... It is like Honks in the sense that it can be delayed for so long, and it is a 500 millisecond bash. However, it does have a lot less tracking. So if Spartan were to just use half his brain cells and dodge this, yeah, it, it tracks a lot less. And it also tracks on a single timing as well. So uh, it it's kind of it's kind of weak. Now, a lot of people are probably going to be thinking faint to guard break, however... Alernikin has eluded, and many others on the competitive subreddit, that you can dodge it and not be count and be able to counter guard break at the same timing as a dodge. However, me and uh, Spartan can't get this to work in a very short time period of this to t of this guide, so we're just not going to bother with that at the moment. <laughs> so, uh, another thing to note is he has a four dash heavy that can lead straight into his chain. And this actually has the crushing counter property as well. So if Spartan would like to do a top heavy, please. This also does the same damage as a 20 dam as the crushing counter light. So why you would want to do this, unless it guaranteed you an execution, I do not know. 
Uh, but it is there. It is possible to do. So if you ever want a crush encounter and a Rochi Riptide Strike and get an execution at the same time, I guess that's there. So, uh, if you, uh, so back to the Shield Bash. If you wish to mix up your timing a bit more for someone who likes to dodge a bit early or a bit late, you may choose to do Black Prior's Zone, which is a solely a bash move. So, upon doing Zone, he will do a single bash, and you can follow it up with a light. The difference is, the timing is, well, different. It's 600 milliseconds instead of 500 milliseconds like the Shield Bash. And, if this is missed, unlike the 4 dash Shield Bash, you can follow up with an attack anyway, making it very useful to punish those who uh, who maybe expected you to follow up with a light. For those that will attempt an early parry punish, they will eat an undodgeable heavy. Or if they were, for instance, a Nabushi or Zhang Zheng that like to use the double dodge, or maybe even sh Shinobi, if you're one of those people that like to flex on Shinobi. <laughs> Shinobi really needs a buff. Anyway, beyond that, let's see... And that's Black Prior also has access to a shield bash out of heavy by pressing guard break during heavy startup. So if you were to do a heavy and then press guard break, you will be you will be able to do a light. However, if this misses Whoa, that has very far reach. I did not expect that. <laughs> if this misses like the 4 dash shield bash, you are not able to follow it up like the zone is. So, yeah, take that as you will. And, uh, another thing to note is the animation is very obvious. So, if someone sees you do a raw heavy out of nowhere, it's very easy to protect. Hey, they're probably going to shield bash. Especially if they're at a very large distance like I did. So, that, ba that bash is a little bit has a bit better tracking than I anticipated. Uh, so, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, another th Now, onto his most used m uh, kind of combo there is in the game. I'm just going to kill Spartan real quick here. So I can actually show this to you. So, a thing to note is he can actually do... He can actually follow up his lights with the 4 dash shield bash so you can do combos like this which is very good for out of stamina pressure however there is a bug in the game as of this video that is being patched this thursday where if an opponent is out of stamina they will uh they will be unable to dodge the shield bash after light however if it's delayed they can do it but also if uh, but this is being patched. It will still be a decent out of stamina pressure in the future. So if I were to do this and then he were to dodge, he would eat the undodgeable. It's uh, it's still very he's still very good at out of stamina play. So that's those are things to keep in mind whenever your opponent's out of stamina and you wish to pressure them, or if uh. You simply manage to land a light off of a parry punish. You can follow it up with that mix-up as well. The Black Prior, since it is dodgeable, uh, especially when you do have stamina, uh, you might want to turn off your damage there, Spartan, so or your health, so you can actually get full health there. Um, since it is dodgeable when you have stamina, it it becomes a form of a Shaolin mix-up in the sense that you either eat a 500 millisecond bash and you eat the 20 damage light after, or you eat the undodgeable. It's very similar to Shaolin's uh, Chi Stance mix-up. So you can do that, and if they start doing that too much, you can just... Stop blocking. If they do that too much, you can eat. Uh, they'll eat the undodgeable. It's a very good mix-up, but many people are struggling to get used to the light into shield bash. So that just... It seems cancerous, but... I mean, people aren't dodging the shield bash, so you're going to eat the shield bash. So not many people are going to use the light into heavy. That's how it is right now uh, for his offensive. Now on to his defensive. Uh, he has a thing, well, kind of his defensive. 
He has a thing no known as Bulwark Stance. Bulwark Stance opens up a lot of Black Pyre's moveset. Upon entering Bulwark Stance, Black Pyre will enter an all-block state. This is done by holding right uh, down on the right analog stick or pressing C on the keyboard. And upon pressing light in this stance, Black Pyre will attempt a... Uh, well, actually, I forgot. In this stance, he does not have superior block and can move around at a slow but manageable pace, and he is vulnerable to guard break. So as you can see... His heavies aren't being interrupted, so he could probably follow up with the light if he tried to. So do a heavy into light. Yeah. You, you don't have superior block in that stance. As well as blocking still drains stamina. So it's very... You have to rely on what Bulwark stance has, not, what, not just what all block itself is. So, upon it pressing light while you're in Bulwark stance, you will attempt what is known as a Bulwark counter. What this will do is flip the opponent and grant you a free unblockable heavy. So if uh, Spartan would please uh, demonstrate. It appears to hit you at first, but I, p I think that's a graphical glitch. Uh, because it will it, it, it just, just gets negated and uh, allows you to attack your opponent. As you're flipping, you are 100% immune to all forms of damage. So if you were hit by a catapult, it simply just doesn't affect you. Now, this works for all forms of any... This basically works for any attack in the game other than traps and guard breaks. So, unblockables or anything. So, if you would like to do an unblockable, if properly timed, we'll flip them. However, because this is how, uh, this, how this works... Oh, yeah, Bastus. I almost forgot about Bastus. Thanks, man. This also works for Bastus as well. Forgot about that. Thanks, man. Uh, this, all, this, unfortunately... It's very weak to guard break, and you can mistime it, so if I just press light, I'll have an extremely long recovery that can just be guard broken out of. And if he does a heavy feint to guard break, it can be very easy to accidentally do that and uh, get hit. So, it's, it's more of a risk versus reward, and this also works for unparryable attacks as well. I can't really demonstrate this right now because unlock tech doesn't exist. So, <laughs> if the attack was unparryable, you could flip that as well. Yeah. Um, and then you also have stands, uh, situations like that where you literally can't tell where the attack is coming from. So, Bulwark Sands can flip that as well. And so, it's very powerful in ganks, as well as if you're being ganked. However, I wouldn't recommend you use it all that much, because, again, it is extremely vulnerable to guard breaking. So, uh, in Bulwark Stance, you can also do a heavy, which will give you an unblockable heavy. Now, uh, that does about 30 damage. You might want to turn your health back on, or just turn it on regen. Turn it on regen. All right. There we go. Okay. You turned it off, not on regen. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, yeah. Upon doing a heavy and bulwark stance, you will... Oh, uh, there you go. You will. It will do 30 damage. However, this can be fainted. And so, uh, often going into bulwark stance and then doing the unblockable will give some reaction out of your enemy. However, we'll get more into that later. And this can be followed up with your chains. Yes, it's parryable, we get it. This can follow up in your chains. However, because because it doesn't it's not a light, you do not you're not able to do shield bash right after. So you're only able to do an undodgeable heavy or a light. However, this can be somewhat useful in case you want to do the unblockable top heavy and then faint. So, there, there's that. However, if your opponent just turtles up, it can be very difficult to land right after the unblockable. However, we'll get more into uses on that uh, in a second. So, Black Prayer can also use Bork's Stance to recover and cancel his light or heavies. So, upon doing a light, he can just immediately enter Bulwark Stance. Also for heavies, chain lights, if I'm not blocked, that is. Or chained heavies. And because of this, you can kind of flow from heavy heavy to unblockable to heavy to unblockable again. And so on and so forth. Making minion clearing very useful because it kind of gives you a pseudo infinite. So, 
you can do stuff like this. Remember, you have to all block right after your heavy, and then you can flow back into it, into double heavy. It's very good for minion clearing, as well as uh, can be useful in ganks, but try not to do the full infinite. Try to target swap between your opponents as you do this, and you will be in a very good spot. However, again, because Black Prior can flip everything, if you're fighting another Black Prior and they all block, you could be vulnerable to Black Prior counter, or Bulwark counter, my bad. Um... Now, because of this, he can also use it to uh, counter things like deflex and lobbering your shove, uh, shove mix-up. So if he were to block my next attack, he will uh, and do a shove. I could simply recovery cancel into bulwark stance and counter him. I did not properly time it, such as that. Because, uh, but if I were to do a light, my light would bounce off and I cannot flow back into Woolwork Stance. So, there's that. And if you're also out of stamina, it can prove to be very good pressure to do a light and then a blockable. But at that point, you might as well just also do the light into Shoulder Bash and use that pressure instead. But I'm, whatever you want, it's, it's up to you. And, um, so, yeah, uh, I have to scroll down and what I was going to say. So, he also has the ability to, um, to immediately flow into Bulwark Stance after blocking. So, uh, if he were to block an attack and then flow into Bulwark Stance, uh, say in Shaman's Zone or during a chain that he could not predict he could very easily uh, bulwark counter that as well. So if he does top heavy into a light, you can flip right after that as well. So very, uh, very defensively, you can you there is no safe offense with uh, with uh, going against a black crier unless you rely solely on guard break. However, if you're like a poor little lawbringer over here who only has a light who only has heavy light or light heavy chains you're kind of fresh out of luck because there's no way to properly faint uh a heavy into another uh a heavy heavy and then faint so you can't really mix up all that much with black prior yeah unless you do a light heavy but even then that's a big risk so that's pretty much it for his offensive and defensive now let's get into his punishes so i forgot to actually make a script on this <laughs> Upon being out of stamina and then parrying... Oh wait, I should probably get to the guard break first. On Pog guard break, he's given a uh, side heavy. Now if he were to follow me over here, so I can do a wall punish. Thanks, bud. On wall punish, he is given a top heavy. However, if he changes his guard uh, while doing this, it won't be guaranteed. So, just make sure you don't switch your guard as you do the punish. Otherwise, it won't, it won't be free. Uh, now, if you were to go out of stamina, please. There is an out of stamina option in your menu. But okay. So, upon going out of stamina, he is giving a light into a heavy. However, that's a very uh, that's not the best option, because he was near a wall. That actually wasn't doable. It's supposed to be a top heavy into top heavy. Or top light into... Actually, was it side light into top heavy? I can't remember. Oh yeah, it was side light into top heavy. Uh, the top light will whiff, as you just saw. So it's very... Uh, so if you ever throw someone out of stamina, that is the max punish. However, if you were to parry someone out of stamina... I mean, if you're near... Yeah. You will get a side heavy into side heavy. I've seen some people say they get a, uh, some uh, two top heavies or something like that. However, this is the most confirmed. Yeah. Try it again. Just in case. Oh, you get... I mean, yeah, you get a side heavy into top heavy. I suppose. And uh, if you're near a wall, you can do a top light into a top heavy as well. But the thing is, that's just not... Uh, yeah. Like, uh, I switched my guard. 
However, they both do the same damage, so it's just better to do that. If your guard's already top when you throw your opponent and you're not near a wall, what you need to do is you just need to unlock, unlock into heavy, and uh, you, will grant, you will be granted the same amount of damage. So, that's, uh, so if your guard's already top and you throw them, do an unlock light into heavy. If your guard is already to the side when you throw them, just do side light into top heavy. And you'll uh, get the same damage. So, yeah, that's about it for like prior. punishes, his mix-up potential, and his moveset. I'm not going to go into detail and say exactly what you guys need to do to win. Unfortunately for this tutorial, he has a very small um, two-hit combo, but everything else allows for lots of potential that you guys can think of on your own. And... Um, so, next up we also have Black Briar's feats. So, uh, I'm going to show you the feats that he has, rather than, uh, and give you a little recommendation of what he does have. Um, so for his first feat you have the custom feat of Sinister Shield, which grants a shield to an ally by inflicting some damage to yourself. It's not much damage, but it does give a very significant shield that may that can probably take like a good heavy from an enemy uh, so it could be life or death but at the same time it's not that much but it can be coupled with your level 2 feet for uh, for maximum effectiveness iron lungs you can sprint one out of stamina could be good for tribute not that good for any other case and speed revive can be very good in situations such as that of breach where revives are extremely important so I really want. I really like how this is a feat in his uh, availability. And then you also have Healing War, which is slowly regain health while in Bulwark stance. This is actually very good, and I like this as an inclusion. Uh, it's not a significant amount of health. It's extremely slowly, and he has to maintain all block. It's not bad, but uh, and it's not exactly strong either. But it does pressure opponents into attacking you. Or getting or guard breaking you while you're in bulwark stance as well as if you're on a healing point it can be used to heal you almost twice as fast and it's very good that way um doom banner and nearby enemies have less powerful defense could be good in ganks however i have not seen many people use this due to healing ward being well so good at uh what it is and then you also have inspire which is allies and yourself do more damage soldier slide faster very good in breach uh, however, the you, sim you simply cannot pass up a healing point, uh, a mobile healing point in Breach, which is something that is very important. And then you also have Oathbreaker for your level 3. Remove all shields from targets and temporarily prevent them from gaining any more shields. Very useful for if you see someone about to enter revenge, you can pop it. And if they do pop revenge, they won't have any armor, so you can just pound through them. And if... You you notice someone already in revenge just use it and it'll break through the armor and it's actually pretty effective um and if you ever see someone use sinister shield you can use oathbreaker to counter the sinister shield and that's also a good idea as well and it'll also break past the uh the revenge shield as well when if they do happen to get them at the time uh of shortly using after oathbreaker so it's actually very good but, however, having more than one person on your team carry this can be somewhat cumbersome, so you also have other options here. Both of these options are pretty good. Other than that, you have Punch Through, which can be used to deal block damage uh, when enemies block your attacks. It's about 10 block damage every time. It's not bad, especially when coupled with the outer stamina pressure I did mention before, which is the Light, um, uh, light Bash Light, so that's not bad. And then you also have Tough as Nails, which is raises max health when unlocked. Uh, it's effective uh a little bit more effective than punch through however uh punch through is still pretty good so good feats all around for the level three and uh wise choices then we also have umbral shelter for the level four which is for a short time giant shields for you and nearby allies shield is, shields don't stack you'll get three pulses of shields every shield every pulse will generate a full bar shield They'll happen within a second of each other, and as it says, they don't stack. So, 
if you use it just as someone's getting hit, they'll get a full shield by the time the attack's over, and then they'll give another pulse of a shield in case another one of your teammates do get hit. Or you could run in a straight line and give a good number of your teammates the shield as well. It's uh, very effective, but um, the shields don't last that long, but they're still effective. And so that's actually much better than Phalanx altogether. But that's it. Regenerate. Regenerate your health when out of combat. There's almost no reason to carry this if you're having Healing Ward, however, if you want to carry Inspire, Regenerate can be an option, but uh, you will have to sacrifice the other two feats uh, that you gain for level 4 as well, so you kind of have to play this very weird. But if you want Regenerate, you're going to have to make some, you're gonna have to make some uh, big choices here. So, take that as we will, and Breach, this is actually a very, really good feat, so... If you're on the attacking side of Breach, Regenerate could be very effective for you. However, if you're on the defending side, Umbral Shelter is also a good option. However, if you don't want Regenerate when you're on the attacker side of Breach, uh, you might want to be interested in Morale Booster, which is improved damage for you and your allies for a short duration. Very useful for making a rush on the commander and or a guardian. So it's, it's pretty out there. And uh, as for Dominion, these are all well-rounded feats except for regeneration which you don't want to use regeneration in dominion because it is pointless so that's about it it's actually a pretty good feat set and uh that'll be it for this video i hope you guys did enjoy this uh overview of black Briar and uh his move set is everything other than perks uh well actually uh per i'm gonna just show you the perks right now they're not all that they're all not all that uh complex but uh, they are what they are. So for perks that he has, he he has Remedy, Bastion, Feline Agility, Eventual Barrier, Last Stand, Bulk Up, and Rising Dawn. Remedy allows you to get 10 health per on every kill that he lands. Bastion allows him to get 10% damage reduction on every zone he stands on. Feline Agility allows him to gain a small speed uh, speed increases as he gains more feats. Ventral Barrier allows him to gain a small shield after he exits the range. The Last Stand allows him to have uh, small bits of damage reduction when uh, he is at one bar of health. Bulk Up allows him to slowly gain more health as he gets more feats. However, this does kind of ruin the point of getting Tough as Nails, so either choose between running Tough as Nails or this or Bulk Up more often. And then you also have Rising Dawn, which is allows allies to get 75% of their health on revive. If you're uh, if you're planning on being a medic Black Prior, this might be useful for you. And that is all I have for Black Prior. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to hit that like please, and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. And don't forget to leave a comment down below, and I'll see all you dudes in the next video.